I want to focus in on the ordinary American, the ordinary British person. They're looking at an economy which is lurching, like you said, from one end extreme to the other. Right. They're looking at their savings being depleted. They're looking at prices going through the roof. Mm -hmm. What should they do in order to weather the storm that is coming within the next few months? Well, there is a lot they can do. And I'm going to give you an answer, and everyone rolls their eyes and goes, what's well, obvious? The answer is diversification. Everyone goes, oh, we, we know that, you know, diversification. But they know the term, but they actually don't know what diversification is. And I'll give you an example. I run into people all the time. They go, well, Jim, I'm fully diversified. I have 50 stocks in 10 different sectors, telecommunications, semiconductors, consumer non-durables, metals and mining. And I go, you're not diversified. You may have 50 stocks, but you're in one asset class called stocks or equities. And they're all going to go up together or they're all going to go down together. And the more stressful the condition, the more reason you have to be concerned about it, the higher the correlation. You know, on any given day, some stocks go up and stocks go down. But when you dial the stress meter up, they all tend to move together. So that's, I don't care about your 50 stocks, your 10 sectors, that's not diversified. So what does real diversification look like? Have a sleeve of equities if you want, that's fine. I would say um, I look hard at oil, natural gas, natural resources, agriculture. Again, kind of equities that have hard assets behind them that will do well in inflationary times mm -hmm. or even in recessionary times because you need all those things uh, no matter what. Um, then a slice of real estate. You know, I wouldn't be in commercial real estate, but you know, residential real estate, um, income producing real estate, farms, et cetera, that's good. Um, I have a big slug of cash. And people go, well, cash doesn't have any yield. Although lately, the yields, you can get uh, two, three percent, you know, on like a CD. Uh, but even in a simple um, savings account, um, you know, it, it is quite low. It's, it's kind of less than one percent. But people don't understand the value of cash in a couple of respects. Number one, in a deflationary environment, we're not there yet, but we could hit that if the recession gets bad enough. Cash could be your best performing asset. Mm -hmm. It doesn't go up in nominal terms, but it goes up in real terms. Mm -hmm. If you have 2% deflation, your cash is worth 2% more uh, in terms of purchasing power. But the, but the real value of cash is optionality. Mm -hmm. And this is not well understood. I shared an office with Myron Scholes uh, for six years, so I see options under the pillow, <coughs> so to speak. But uh, um, if you're the one with cash, when things First of all, um, it'll definitely preserve wealth. So if things are falling all around you, your cash will be what it's worth, unless you're in Silicon Valley Bank. It's a separate issue, but um, although they got bailed out. Uh, but so it'll preserve wealth, even if it's not a high, high performer. It'll do very well in deflation. But the real benefit is when everything else is falling apart, you're the one who can go shopping. So it's kind of an at-the-money call option on every asset class in the world. You know, Everyone's selling everything in a panic. You can bide your time, watch it go down, look for a bottom and then say, okay, now I'll, I'll buy these things down 30% or 40% or 50% from where they were. Um, some alternatives, I, um, uh, you know, I have a number of investments in uh, you know, private equity and venture type situations and yeah, they're risky uh, and they're not liquid, uh, but um, some of them will do very well, some of them have done well, so that's nice. Um, and then a slice of gold uh, and I recommend 10% because uh, people, you know, they put words in your mouth and go, Jim Rickard says, sell everything and buy gold. I've never said that, not a good strategy. But 10%, yeah. But just holding on there a yeah. second, Jim. So you're saying to diversify, which is obviously, you, you've said gold, you've said cash, particularly in the case of deflation, and you're saying stocks and options. Now, there's a lot of people who would look at things like Bitcoin and would look at digital currencies. Look at Jim's face. <laughs> <laughs> now, you're I, right. know, you're right. I, I know you're a big Bitcoin guy, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> you're a huge fan. <laughs> huge fan. Of, could you please explain to people why, particularly this applies to younger men who see these types of cryptocurrencies as a shortcut to wealth and to generate money for themselves. Right. Why this might not be a good idea. Well... 